Good morning, good morning, happy Sunday, everyone. How are you all doing today? Hope you've been doing super well. I've got my tea here. It's almost finished brewing. Lord Mist, hello. Now, I can't remember here if we left this in a working condition or if uh, if it's in a sort of halfway working condition. Uh, I think it's working. But we haven't uh, we haven't implemented the the bullet collision with the ships yet. Yeah, OK, so we added in the UFO UFO fires randomly. Uh, but as a ship, if I try to fire, I can't actually kill the UFO, and the UFO can't kill me. However, both of us can kill asteroids, so that's that's cool. UFO ignores the asteroids because they're they're rude like that, just to try to make things a little bit a little bit harder for us. Um, all right, so and the bullets hitting ships. This is what we're doing. We're doing a um, we're, we're doing a bit masking for this. So last time on Friday, we began working for like actually creating what, what the bit mask is and like what that ends up looking like. Uh, I think over here in helpers, I have this bit mask here. So we have two layers uh, for the mask uh, layer one and layer two. Now, the way that the bit mask works, and if if you didn't see that video, that that's fine. I'll go over it really quickly. Um, we store these as U32s, and that means we can have 32 because it's a U32. U32 layers. Um, now I'm thinking about this in a 2D sense, like just two two dimensions of uh, a collision detection. It's 2D games. That's fine. Uh, there is a way to do bit masking with 3D. I don't know that yet, so I can't necessarily talk to that at this point in time. But for this, we can say we have our main layer, and that's that's this. Uh, the binary number of 0000000001. Uh, and then uh, this would be layer two, which is I'm going to put the bullets in there. They're going to be safe. They're not going to be collided with anything because I'm going to check to see, hey, you um, do a uh, a bit wise and and then that will say, hey, is there any ones that line up with these? Uh, and if there are, it's going to be greater than zero. If it's no, it's going to be zero, which then tells me if any if it like either the two things I want to check are in the same layers. So when we create the bullet, when we insert the bullet into the world, I'm actually giving it a collision bit mask and putting the bullets into the safe bullets layer. Um, I'm also giving it a like how long that has lived. Bit mask, interesting, not all that rusty though. Yeah, I am. Um, so there is a couple different ways that we could potentially do this. Uh, and we decided that we're going to try with bit mass. Now we have to do it manually. Um, but there, I, like the, the only other way was basically a state machine uh, that I could think of. And we've done that a lot. And uh, this got suggested. So I was like, oh, let's let's try it. Let, let, I, I want to learn. I want to learn this. So. Um, now, every single time we tick. Uh, the technique is exactly the same for 3D. Also, hello, Epic Blarg. Uh, the only difference is that one needs to switch one's mental model. Okay, so interesting. We have to just decide to live in a 3D world. But I live in a 2D world, so we're, we're fine for right now. Um, okay, so then I do have a system for... We, in, we have a system for incrementing the ticks live, and we should have a system 
and Dewey. Uh, activate safe bullets, yes. So after the bullets have lived for 10 ticks, uh, we then do a... We then reassign what layer it's in. And now the bullets should be active. And that the, they're active just because they're in the main the main layer. So now, now when we test their collisions, everything should be fine. So we should now be able to do handle bullets hitting ships. Where is that? Here, here you are. Uh, we may need to do a lot, change this a lot more. We sort of like wrote this up and then realized that that it wasn't quite as easy because the the player ship was killing itself instantaneously. Because bullets spawn in the center of the ship, and that's sort of like preparing a torpedo in a submarine and then destroying it before firing, which is not optimal. Okay, so we need to get the uh, the bit mass, the collision bit mass. Also, okay, so if we if we get that, then we should be able to tell, hey, are you going to because we have uh, oh, we have markers too. Okay, so we have bullet locations and we have the ship locations um, that we sort of like extract out of these locations. We're looping through each ship location. There should only be two of them, but in the future I might add more. And it should be two of them at most right now. There could even be zero. And for each ship location, I want to loop through each of the bullet locations. So we get the bullet location out. And then here's where we get the distance to ship and then, then have it hit. And you notice we're getting this debug hit here. Uh, and that's because I think we saw that in here we're saying hey hit we got a hit um it's not what we wanted though and that's mostly because hey you're inside the ship your own bullet hit you and nah, not not the best idea so really we need in here also to get the bullet and the ship um well we could just detect if it's in the same but let's do let's do like the actual bit masking thing. So for each ship location, we also need to get the ship um, collision layer, bit mask layer. I'm not sure what the right layer is gonna like what the right name is gonna be. It's so your a data wrapper, and that gives you a U32 equals um me our collision oh which means we do need oh but we don't know we don't know what the uh the index of this is do we so i think this may have to be done slightly different so i wonder if i want to do something like or location and we'll also get index in um Locations, iter, that enumerate. Okay, so that gives us index and location. So now we can get the ship location. Uh, well, we can't really get the ship location. We can just say like, hey, this is going to be the location is location past it. Um, but we can get the layer also. However, we don't want to do that unless it actually is the ship that we're looking for. So if, uh, oh, but it's markers, right? So really, let's just go with marker here.
Okay, so markers with that. Um, oh, I don't think this is quite as easy as this, right? Because this is location marker size collision bit mask. Wait, do they all have that? I think bullets have all of these too. Do do players have them? Like insert asteroid. I don't care about the asteroid. I don't have a player in here. I want to find all the areas where we do spawn entity. Or, or not. That just creates the player. Oh, create player. Here it is. Um, okay, so we do have a collision bit mask with the player. And I believe for... For the UFO, I think we also have that too. So, perfect. So we, we can do this. All right, so then we can loop through the markers. Um, basically make this a marker that we cast to get you. You're gonna be a string. Now, if the marker, uh, gonna borrow this and dereference this so if you're equal to entity types um this is the we just want this to be a ship like of some kind and we know it's going to be either a ufo or a player so if you're a if you're that or Oh, I don't know if I can. Oh, I should be able to borrow a device like that. Borrow. You're equal to entity types UFO. Then we're good to go. You should be one of those things. Um, now. I wonder if I want to do the opposite and say, if you're not one of these things, we're going to continue, or we're going to break. No, we'll probably continue. Okay. I'm trying to decide if I want to, like, um, keep ourselves down on this level here, or if, like, being inside of the if is fine. I don't know. Let's go with this for right now, and then if I decide to, to not it later... We'll be fine. Oh, and you both need to be two strings. Okay, so we now know that we have a player or a ship. Like, we have some kind of ship here. Um, which means now we need to get its layer. So we now have the ship layer equals, and this is going to be the collision bit mask. Um, of index. And then we're going to cast you. So we get that. Now we can now we can start doing some like those interesting calculations to determine if it's if if it's a zero. So. Um, we're then need to go through all the bullets. So this is going to be for um, bullet, wait, bullet, we have the ship, yes, it's gonna be for bullet, for bullet, in, we have to do this in locations again, ooh, but this is, this is tough, 
However, we do have the bullet locations separately, and I think this is going to be fine. Could also make this interesting by... We could have get bullet location, get ship location, pass in, pass back like a, um, a tuple of the index and the location or a little struct with the, the index too in there. Might be really helpful. Uh, so or bullet in bullet locations. Yeah, we do. We do need that. So I would imagine that we need and I might as well do it for the ship too. Then I don't have to do this entire thing here. It will be a little bit easier. If I pass back for bolt locations and ship locations, a little struct, just just a little struct in here. Let's create that down here. So if I have a struct of like a um like a location in the index, like um, location wrapper. I don't know what to call it. Uh, we're going to have a location, which is going to be a, a point. And we're going to have the index, which is a U size. And, and that's all I really care about. Now, these are locations of a reference to component data. So... You should probably be a reference to component data. Now, if I do that, we need lifetimes, which we can do here. Now, if I do this, I wonder if I'm going to need to do, do it everywhere. Now, I could also just do the tuple. That would probably be easier for us to do. Um, but this will be easier to read later. Uh, let's impl our... I think, I think this should be fine. Uh, I don't even know if I need to like have an impl for it or anything. I'm going to make this public. And, okay, so in get bullet locations, let's say, uh, I want to return a result of a vec of not this component data, but I want to return this location wrapper. And you need a lifetime specifier and it's gonna live as long as that. So we're gonna say, how do I tell it? Cause it's not a, okay. I can just do that. No, I can't. I don't want to say that it's a reference. Yeah, it doesn't. I want to use that that lifetime. How do I tell it the lifetime? when it's not a reference. Uh, can I run you? And you will give me better information maybe? Line 34. Okay, so it is... Oh, line 34. Oh, okay, hold on. If I take you out, we're just worried about, let's say, bullet locations for right now. All right, so you're saying missing the lifetime specifier. I wonder if it's going to figure it out automatically. Um, oh, location wrapper. Oh, okay. So like this. An A in there. That side. 
I am not used to that syntax. So thank you, Epic Blark. That's super helpful. Okay, then we have our bolt locations, which is this vector. We're going to return that. That's fine. But we put the wrong things in here. Uh, so we have this marker, data wrapper, cast. Okay, so if marker, borrow, and to bullet strings. Okay, so we just push locations of index to get that in there, but we really need to push um, a location wrapper. And then we're going to have a location of uh, locations index and index is just that okay so you're you're happy there we're gonna do the exact same thing here so result we're gonna turn a locations wrapper that uh, we have our ship locations going to push in. It may help if you think of lifetimes as generics. Yeah, I guess it does make sense to think of them as generics because they're kind of used in the same place. Like the big the big difference is like the tick in front. I hadn't really thought of that before. Yeah, that I think that helps. Um, all right, so we're going to have a location wrapper. We have a location, which is going to be our locations index, and then we have our index. Okay, so that creates that. Okay, so then we can come up here. Now we have our vector of location wrappers. So now we can check to see if we have no ship locations, we're done. Nothing, nothing to do. Um, we kind of need to like just redo this and it'll be a little bit easier for us. So I want to loop through all of our, well, let's think about this. We have the index, that, that should be fine then. That'll be fine because then we can get like the collision bit mask and everything else. We could put the collision bit mask in like each of these things too. Could be interesting. Because um, if I do for uh, ship location in ship locations, in ship location, we're now going to get a, uh, we have the index and we have that location. So we can extract that out. So that location, our data wrapper point equals ship location dot location dot cast. Okay, so we have our ship's location. Let's now loop through all of the bullets. So for bullet location in bullet locations. You can't, oh, right. Dot location, dot cast. Okay, so. You said moved value. Okay, I don't want to move you. So let's go ahead and uh, just reference you. Interesting that that's not yelling at me about that, but okay. So then we cast you out. This gives us this RC of a ref cell because that's what the data wrapper is. So we could now borrow that and then just start using the data or figuring things out. So we have a bullet and we know that we have a ship of some kind. 
if we look down here what we're doing here once we have the bullet we then figure out how does how far it is from the ship but we need to before we do that get the layer of the ship so that ship layer equals our collision bit mask um of our let's rename you to be a ship ship location it's gonna be our ship location dot ship location dot don't i have an index in here oh no ship locations oh i lost it um right Call you the rapper. I can't shadow it. Okay, so then you're going to be the ship location wrapper index. Okay, so we get used. That gives us the collision bit mask out. Uh, then we can extract you here. Um, you're a U32. So then we're going to cast you. And then we're good to go. So now we have our ship layer. Uh, remember that the bitmask says what layer objects belong to, so you can think of it in two ways. If two objects do not live in the same layer, then do not bother performing the actual collision check. Perform a collision check if there is a collision, then check if they live in the same layers and ignore the collision if they don't live. Right, yeah, so that, that's the question is like, what do I want to do first? That's the way I'm thinking about it here is I'm going to check to see if they're in the same layer and then check to see if they're colliding if if they are. So that was that was my my plan here. So I have the ship layer and then in here we're going to get the bullet layer so that uh, now we need to make sure that this is the same thing. So we have our bolt location wrapper wrapper here. We have a bolt location. It's going to be a bullet. Uh, layer data wrapper of a u32 equal to the bullet location wrapper uh wait no 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 this is the uh collision bit mask of position bullet location wrapper dot index then we cast like that so now we have the bullet layer and we have the ship layer so now we can do our our bitwise and i'm pretty sure it's the bitwise and okay um so then continuing through here um if if the um dereferenced collision bit mask we can just borrow this Oh, it's the ship layer. Never mind. Uh, the dereferenced ship layer. We're going to borrow this. If that and this is a bitwise and just a single ampersand. Um, and that's going to be with the bullet layer, the dereference bullet layer borrowed. So if that's equal to um, if that's greater than zero. Uh, then we're going to like do the collision. However, we can also just do if this is equal to zero, then we want to just continue. Like we're, we're done. Like we're, we're not, we don't need to do the collision because they do not share a layer in, in any way. All right. What's your, what are you upset about? Uh, ship location wrap, wrapper, wrapper. Okay, so we now know they share a layer. Time for us to do the collision. We actually know how to do this here. We can get the distance between the ship and a bullet. So that's going to be um, the same thing that we have down here. So that distance to ship is equal to our uh, bolt location so we already have um, the bolt location here 
Uh, we're gonna borrow this to get just the ref of the point, um, and then we can get a distance too, and then this is gonna be the ship location. So uh, that's gonna be a dereferenced ship location, and then we also have to borrow you. That gives us an F32, and then we can say, okay, um, if distance, so like we, we have that right here, if the distance to ship is less than some, some number, we just arbitrarily made up 25. So if distance to ship is less than 25.0, um, then we can just do here. We'll do our debug, um, hit now with, um, bit mess. I expect, oh, it needs to be a reference too. I know that looks a little bit weird, but let's, let's bear with it. Let's try running this and see if it works. I just did a build, not a run. Okay, first of all, the UFO doesn't just instantly die, so that that's cool. We have our player here. I can fire, and I don't instantly die. Now, did I hit it? I feel like I hit it. Yeah, and that's uh, that's not working. So, unfortunately, this isn't quite what I was hoping for. Now, we do remember that we were getting this hit before. So, this was working. This is not. So, I think maybe this is my problem. Because if I, if I remove you and rerun, I think I'll get that. Yeah, I get the hit now. And I'm, it's because I'm hitting myself. What's interesting is that the UFO isn't uh, isn't being hit at all. That's also really interesting. I wonder if actually the problem is that I didn't query the UFO. I think it is working. Um, or maybe it isn't. Ooh, maybe maybe the... Did I forget to run that? That's a good question. Um, activate safe bullets. Now you're, you're saying that you're working. We're looping through you. Put you on the main layer. I wonder if um, 10 is is not not enough. If I have something like let's do f like 60, one one second. This this might be way too long. Um, I think we have to turn. You have you on. Actually, it might be might be good to like see what these are. I kind of want to do a debug of um the ship the ship layer and the bullet layer. So interestingly enough here, I'm not getting anything for these bullets, which is telling me that Okay, these are all two, two, one.
I'm seeing like value two, value one, and them after like a long period of time. So if I take that and if we just do this, in here. I think we have a couple different problems, you know, sort of culminating together. So we have zero and one is is happening. And the okay, these are hitting from the we're getting this from the UFOs bullets, too. So that's that's good. Well, I guess this is the ship, the ship layer and the bullet layer. When the when the UFO fires a bullet, we're putting you on the safe bullets layer. And we're giving you ticks to live. Okay, so that, that should be fine. Then we activate the bullet. Activate safe bullets. Get the collision bit mask. We get the ticks lived. Let's make it back down to like, I don't know, 15 ticks. So we should see we should see zero a lot more often, but uh, what other information do we need? Maybe the number of bullets and like the number we, we know we have ships. Uh, I kind of want to double check, like how many ships do we have? I want to uh, Debug um, ship locations dot length um, and don't want to debug you because you're just gonna be too much. Well, look at that. We have we have nothing. And we have you and your one. So I'm not picking up this other ship. That's a that's a problem. So. In down here, get ship locations. We check the marker. See if it's either of you. But what I need to double check is, do you have any of these? Uh, so for create UFO. We have a location. We have a, a marker. There's no size. Look at that. There's no size. We need we need to give the URL, the, the URL, the UFO a size. Um, oh, and here's the UFO size right here. So with component. Okay, so you get a size string and our data is going to be the UFO size so if I do that and nothing else changes now we have one and now we have two okay so now now we actually have both of the the ships okay Okay, so one one bug down. 
We have we're querying for all the ships and we're querying for all the bullets. Um now if I don't change anything else. Can I now hit the ship? Hit now with bit mass. Now I want you to hit me, sh me UFO. Ah, kind of, it's kind of hard to get hit on purpose. Yes, I got hit. Okay. So the hitting works. the The problem was, the problem was that I wasn't uh, querying for the ships, so I only had the player ship and not the other ship. So, given that. Now, what I want to do is destroy the ship. Um, with that, we need the we need the the ID. So, we need the entity ID, which of course you're not going to tell us anymore. Uh, so in the world, I also need entity ID here. So let's go ahead and search for entity ID. Entity IDs, create it, entity ID, unwrap, Togglebit, hello! How are you doing today? How's your Sunday going? Alright, so, if we hit them, it's time for us to destroy the ship. So we're going to delete the ship. Um, oh, Sunday is slow day? Stop rewriting a, sh a shader. Oh, you know... I've always wanted to to learn how to write shaders. Uh, they seem so cool um, and so interesting. I know that like GGEZ and so many game engines support them too. Uh, it feels to me like I can really level up my game if I learn how to do that. You do. You don't know how to write shaders. Oh, I, I sometimes feel that way too about everything. Um, I. Like, I guess, where did you get started? Like, are you just sort of uh, learning as you go? Or did, did you ask, like, have a resource to learn shaders? Um, okay, so if our distance to ship is less than this, it's time for us to kill the ship. Um, so we have the ship location wrapper. That's going to give us an index. Then we can get an ID. So we can get the ship ID is, and we have to do this as the reference to the data wrapper with a u32 is equal to and this is going to be the uh entity ids um of the ship location of wrapper dot index uh they're going to cast you and like that hello chad how are you doing oh you started with learning opengl and you need to do some shader programming for that okay okay i never done OpenGL like directly i've i've like i'm using ggez that uses the open gl under the hood but not not the same thing not not as impressive as you're starting with open gl okay so we have our ship id with with this now so i can extract that out and we can do a delete i delete by id so we can do a world dot delete by id and it's going to be a dereferenced ship id borrowed and and that's it we're gonna delete the ship we should also delete the bullet just just an idea that we should like the bullet shouldn't just go through it um especially if like i start having multiple ships in there we don't want like friendly fire to to happen so let's also do a um world delete by id we're going to be able to do a dereferenced um oh never never mind we need so that bullet id it's a data wrapper u32 um you're going to be our entity ids of the bullet location wrapper index we're gonna cast you 
world.leapid and it's gonna be a dereferenced bullet ID uh, borrowed. So given given that when I run this now, we should be able to kill each other. Uh, I, okay, I killed it, but it came back immediately. What, what did I do to, can you shoot yourself in a game? Yes. I did make that. Now I'm trying to make the bullets not um not last long enough to kill me, but if I if I move fast enough, I think I think that I can. Uh so the idea is slow and steady. Um Oh, the UFO shot me. Cool. So I can be shot by the UFO and I can shoot the UFO, except I don't understand. That's actually pretty good. It's the UFO is completely firing at random in random directions. Like it doesn't care. Now, why is the UFO getting respawned? Like I'm deleting it, which should remove it completely. Now we have spawn UFO system here. Is this running every single frame? Huh, so I'm uh, I'm every single frame if there's no UFO creating a UFO. Seems like a great idea. What what could possibly go wrong there? It's hard mode, right? We're just saying like you always have a UFO to to contend with. Um, I think what this means is we have to decide how how we're going to handle this. Do I want do I want the UFO to be like randomly spawned or maybe like at the beginning or like ticks after. So if you remove the limit of number of UFOs, you will have ultra hard mode. Yes, actually that's a, I'm kind of curious. If I, if I don't check here, does UFO exist? If I just always say false, like if, if you're just always false, um, Am I just going to get infinite UFOs? Um, the answer is yes. Uh, and and also frame rate. FPS goes bye bye. Absolutely. Did I just destroy? OK, I didn't I didn't kill the stream, so that's good. This is this is the content you're here for. Um, yeah, so I, it will attempt to, except it doesn't steer properly because I think what's happening is it's looping through finding the first UFO in the world and then st steering that. So I would need to like update the, like the AI, uh, for the UFO to like work on all of them, not just on the first one it finds. Um, but that's fine. I don't think we should have more than one UFO at a time. On top of that, I think that we should probably have like a. Um, I guess it wouldn't be in here. It would be like in in like the update UFO. Movement, I would want that to be like a lot slower and then slowly go go faster and faster and faster. So let's try this. At the beginning of every level, starting at level two, we get a new a UFO. We get we get a UFO. And then after that, the UFO gets a little bit stronger with every level. 
So if we query for so spawn UFO system, we also check what our current level is, which we have the ability to get that. So we can do uh, our current level is world.get resource names our level. So here this result, uh, we can then borrow you right here. That gives us a ref to this resource. So then we can cast you so that level is, um, what are you going to be? You're going to be, I think you're a U32. Um, a reference to a U32 is equal to level cast that. All right, so that gives us what the level is. Why are you suddenly upset about? Oh, right. I now have to. Let's uh, let's actually not do this here. Do that. Uh, I need you to be a level. Wrapper. Um, and then as soon as this is done, we're going to drop the level wrapper. So drop you here. So that way you don't interfere down there. So that gives us the level. Do you have to call to string every time you get a resource? Right now I do. Um, to make this this easy, I, I just have all of the names that I'm like grabbing stuff in and they're stored as strings in the in the library. And so I just have an enum here. And then I'm using the strum macro to string. I, I kind of wish that I had a different macro or a different like trait that would allow me to just auto to string it. I didn't necessarily want to to have a, a two string somewhere else i don't know i i don't know how i feel about it 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 definitely yells at me though if i don't do do something else a stir would be better yeah probably it would probably be a lot better yeah it is it is a lot of allocations especially when i get a lot of bullets but I'm thinking for like the next iteration through. So once we're done with this, I'll, I'll probably do another update to the uh, ECS system. And that I think that would be like one of the things that we can do is make it so that way it could implement a, a to stir. Yeah, this is an ECS that I made myself. So it is um, highly dubious. It's very dubious, but it works, which is, I'm very happy about. And we've learned a lot. We've learned a ton. We've, we've learned way more than we would if we just used another ECS system. And we've done that in the past. So I wanted to like start of start like figuring out how this thing works, how these work behind the scenes. Um, something else that's really interesting about this ECS uh, that I haven't seen in very many other ECSs, there are is no implementation of unsafe in it. There is a lot of uh, there's problems with that. There's also no dynamic dispatch. Um, that's also really interesting. I see like all the other ECS systems use dynamic dispatch. This does not. You should make a profiling round with the engine, create some flame grab. Oh, that would be so good. Yeah. Can you make the key T instead of string? I did that at one point in time. I had, I had the key T instead of string and I want to say what what was the what was the thing that caused us not to, to stop doing that? I think I just ran into too many ran into something, some problem, and I can't remember what it was now. Probably should have like written down like the reason why I moved away from T for a string, uh, for the key. Um, but okay. Let's see. 
So I get my dis, uh, let's see, spawn UFO. So we, we've got this back here. Okay, right. We got our level here. Um, so what I want to do is I only want to spawn. And I, we might as well do this. Okay, so if, if UFO exists, this is going to be interesting. Because a strategy I can see from doing this is you can try to leave the UFO alive as long as possible uh to to prevent a harder one from spawning um and I, I i'm okay with with having that in there so we we grab our level once we have the level i want to determine what level it, it is and if it's greater than two I want to spawn it. Well, there's a problem. We need to know it has the has a like if we're going to start with two, let, let, let's say we just do if level is equal to is like greater than uh, one. So if, if you're two or, or greater. Um, actually, let's just do if you're less than if you're less than two, then we're also going to return. Okay, like that. So we're done. If we get past this, then time for us to create our, our UFO. The problem here is that as soon as we destroy it, another one will be created still, as long as it's later than, than level two. But we're we're alone on level one. So we're, we're here. We like get to be nice and happy as we're destroying... These asteroids don't need to worry about anything. Everything's perfectly fine. Nothing to worry about. And then suddenly there's a UFO. Um, oh, and I have to be far enough away to hit it. Wait, why can't I kill it now? Oh, there it is. Okay, I, I did kill it. Oh, but it starts off in like that, that, and then I died. Um, so then I need to check to see if the UFO has been killed this level. So when the UFO dies, hitbox size should also uh also should the ufo kill the ship on collision like the asteroids yeah that's a good question um i don't know if we should like maybe um i have like the ufo in cheat mode so the ufo like doesn't collide with asteroids either because you know they're, they're better than us they they, they they know how to like just avoid all of the asteroids Um, let's see. I'm thinking. Let's see. Let's do one one at a time. I don't want to do. I want to concentrate on like the UFO hitting and colliding yet. Maybe that's something we can do like later. Uh, for for right now, when I kill the UFO, I need to mark the the level that it was killed i need to mark the level that it was killed so that's another resource so um we're gonna have ufo ufo killed on level So, let UFO build on level. Um, our levels are U32s, so we'll make this also a U32. So you're going to be a... Um, 
we're gonna start this on level we'll just initialize this to one it's kind of not 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 the best um okay so we're gonna say ufo killed on level one and that means level two the next level the ufo will come back And then here's our add resources. So let's go ahead and add a resource here. World dot add resource names um, UFO killed on level. And then our data is going to be the UFO killed on level. So that resource exists in our world now. So now when we spawn the UFO, we can not only check what the level is we can also check um let ufo build on level wrapper world get resource aims ufo club level string that borrow you that gives us this then we can do that so build on level which is au32 so it's a dereferenced um ufo killed on rapper lapper rap rapper we're gonna cast you and there we go oh then we have to drop drop uh unwrapper for that okay so if level so we're not going to do that check anymore so now we're going to say if if the current level so we we kill the ufo on like a certain level and then we want it to be the level after so if the current level so if the current level is less than or equal to the ufo killed on level then we we're done. We don't do anything. Otherwise, we we move forward. Um, Epic Blar, you're gonna give me a tip that is sort of blasphemous, but it's a trick that can be useful to keep in mind. Okay, so I will I will take this with a grain of salt. Uh, I don't know. Um, I will I will I'll be careful with it. Um, remember that thing where you can move an object temporarily to another layer to make it invulnerable like after you lose a life, etc., you can use that system in reverse. Say, for instance, that you want your ship to blink while it is invulnerable, you can perform a layer check in the draw routine to determine if the ship should blink. Likewise, if you want the player not to be able to fire during the respawn grace period, you can use a layer check there as well. So basically you use layers for a lot of different interesting things. You know, that almost feels like it's um, using layers as a replacement for a um, why did I just miss the the words words um, uh, a a state machine like I'm able to use the layer as sort of like a replacement for a state machine and it's not even a finite state machine because something could be on multiple layers at the same time. So I could have like the blink layer. I could have all sorts of other other things. Yeah, but don't overuse it because that's when you run out of layers, right? Because then next thing I know, I'm like, OK, so we're initializing a U. What's the biggest one they can get? Uh, I think it's a 128, right? We're going to initialize a U128 in order to, yeah. It's an inch, it's super interesting. So I'm going to keep that in mind, but I'm not going to use it for right this second, but I think it's a super interesting tool that I can pull out of my, my back pocket when I, when our, whenever I need it. Basically, if I need something that's not a state machine, but a state machine. 
or like I need a really complicated state machine that might decomplicate it. That's really interesting. So that being said, I should now have a UFO that dies and doesn't respawn until, well, wait a second. I can't, I can't run this yet. I need to actually update the UFO killed on level. So we know it's going to come. It's well, just make sure it spawns on level two to begin with, I guess. I wonder if I should re reduce my um, rotation speed. It's like really hard to like get perfect shots. Okay, so the UFO should, there he is. Uh, now, if I destroy the UFO, it immediately responds because, well, we're not updating this UFO killed on level. So now when we handle bullets hitting ships, now this is where a um, an event system would be really, really good. I don't have an event system right now. Uh, that's actually going to be one of the things we're going to look into for the next game or the next uh, simulation or whatever we build. So until then, uh, right now, we have to increment. If, if this is indeed the, the UFO that gets destroyed, we want to then basically um do something like if is ufo like pass something in there then we want to uh increment um increment like uh ufo level killed on so something like that So some, something like this. Now these don't exist right now, so we have to we have to write them. So how would we do an is UFO? Um, we can do an is UFO by getting the marker, right? So if we have, uh, you're gonna return a boolean. Um, if we have the marker, we can check to see. So we have a marker and we can pass that in. And we have the markers here, so I can pass the marker of ID and that's going to be this reference to component data. So you're going to be a marker reference to component data. We're going to turn a Boolean here. Uh, so then here, we're going to have to cast that down. So let um, marker is a reference to data wrapper with a string inside. Uh, we're going to cast you like that. That gives us an RC and a ref cell inside. Uh, so then we can um, return the result of a dereferenced marker that's borrowed. Are you equal to a entity types UFO to string? Oh, and you have to be wrapped in it. Okay. So that is UFO here. So you take in the marker. So this is going to be markers of um, specifically, this is going to be the ship location wrapper index. Okay, so that gives us that. Next up, increment the UFO level killed on. Um, I'm pretty sure we're going to need the the world for that. And we can't just increment because somebody might survive long enough to increase a level without killing the UFO. So we have to get the current level and set that. 
So function, commit level killed on. So we know we're gonna take in the world, turn a result, and I don't really care what that is. Um, okay, so first up, we need the level. So that our current level, world's world, that get resource, names, level. Now, in this case, we're going to borrow mute. So we have a ref mute. Uh, wait, no. the This one is just going to be borrowed. So we have a ref of the resource. Um, I wonder if I'm going to have to do like some drops in here. That's going to be interesting. Um, we can actually just grab that out too. We can just say our level is equal to a reference. No, we can even just say what, what this is. It needs to be copied out anyways. So you're going to be a U32 equal to a be referenced level dot cast. Okay, so that gives us our level now. Now we also let mute. Uh, this is going to be a UFO level killed on equal to a world. We're going to get the resource UFO killed on level to string um, we're going to borrow mute we can see that gives us a ref mute here um, so now I can cast that as mutable so we're going to let um, UFO level build on you're going to be a mutable reference to a U32 equal to the UFO level killed on that cast mute. So then I want to then set you to, so that's going to be a dereferenced UFO level killed on is going to be um, equal to the level plus one. Oh, wait. just the level. That, that's all I need to do to set, set you to that. Uh, so we need to pass in the reference to the world. And what are you upset about? Oh, and then we need to return. Okay. Uh, pass in a reference to the world. Have that here. Okay. So if we do that, now when we kill a UFO, does it show up on the next level? So here's level one. Come on. Come on. Okay, there's our... Okay, kill the level. Oh, it didn't come back right away. So that's a good sign. Now I need to kill all of these. As you can see, everything gets like really crazy really fast and you can't... I can't survive for very many levels. I think I can survive for maybe like five levels at most. Um, and that's because the number of, uh, the number of, what is it called? Um, asteroids that spawn is equal. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So then we get the, the UFO again. Now the UFO spawns on the same location all the time, which is, Kind of BS. Um, I'm surprised I'm not dead yet. Uh, also, as we increase the level, we increase the speed of the asteroids, uh, which is not not fun because they also increase the speed speed as they get destroyed. So after a while, they're just moving way too fast. And this way, like when it gets to a higher level, if you don't take care of the, the UFO really quickly, it just breaks up all the asteroids. And then, then it becomes insane. 
This is only level four. So surprised I still have my, my lives. Can you render the hitboxes? It would be interesting to see. Uh, yeah, I probably can. Oh, I got unlucky there. Um, okay, how would I want to render the hitboxes? I, yeah, because like for the ship, I'm not using the proper, like I'm not actually getting the size of the ship to determine if it's within that. I, I could pretty easily. Because right now we're just saying if you're less than 25, but what I can say is if we have, we have these sizes right here. What I can do is distance to ship is less than we need to get the ship too. Let uh, ship size um, is a data wrapper of a F32 equal to uh, sizes of the ship location wrapper index um, that cast that ship size um, is equal to ship size dot borrow then Distance to ship is less than our ship size. Um, a dereferenced ship size. There. That should now make it um, proper for each of the ships. Uh, and then if I want to render the hitboxes. So I'm using squares for all my hitboxes. Um, I don't think... I would need to create a new system for this. So render hitboxes S. All right, pub function render hitboxes system. Um, all right, we're going to need the world. Uh, we need the context. Um, uh, I don't know if I need anything else. Uh, gonna need to return a result. Don't need to return anything in it. Uh, this is clearly gonna be debug mode for us. So, um, for this, can I can I actually run this so that it only runs when I want to? I don't I don't know if I can easily. Um, I want to. Query for everything that has a size and a location. Pr pretty much that's all I'm going to care about. So you can have a config flag to only run when doing a debug build. Yeah, but this is this is well, I'm actually curious about how bad performance is going to be hit when I do this, uh, because I'm going to be creating a new mesh for every single one of these. It's going to be it's going to be interesting. Um, let's query. So world query this takes a vector names. So of course you can't find it. Why why would it be able to find anything in helpers? All right, so we're gonna have um, names names. Uh, so names I want location. Uh, and I want the sizes. Oh, wait, you know what? I'm not, I'm using circles for all my, my hit detection. I'm not using rectangles. So this will be, this will be hopefully relatively easy. Um, all right. What are you upset about? Expected value from, I gave you the value. All right, now you're now you're happy. 
Hit circles. Yes, exactly. Um, all right. So then we are going to do let our locations equal to the query that get names location view let um, sizes equal to create it size okay so we have our locations and we have our circle sizes now we can loop through oh we're going to loop through all of one of them and then uh create our mesh and draw it out so we do for index and we could just say location equals locations dot iter enumerate okay so that gives us equals in uh now okay so we have our index we have our location so then we can just do that location it's going to be a data wrapper sure why why not I think it's components. Wait, is it world? It is world. Okay. Data wrapper. Um, you're going to be a point. Apparently, you can't also find that either. It's cool. Uh, data types. Point. Point. It's equal to our location. Dot um okay use uh this one is components cast components then we can cast you okay so now we have our location let's um we can borrow that to like actually get get the location inside um, I now need our sizes. So let our size is a data wrapper, or which is a F32 equal to a sizes of index cast. Okay. So we have those. We can now create our mesh. So let our mesh is equal to a mesh built built rest analyzer. Why? Okay, so we have a mesh builder new. Um, we're gonna create a circle. Uh, so we're gonna do a draw, drop course. We have a draw mode of stroke. Uh, let's make this 2.0 so I can make sure that you can see it. Um, not, well, not that, whatever that is. Um, okay, so the point where where is this gonna be? Well, this is pretty easy. We're gonna have our location. So it's a uh, location. We're gonna borrow that, and we're gonna have to get two array. Um, our radius is gonna be our uh, dereferenced size. Dot borrow. Um, tolerance. We're gonna do zero dot one. And our color. Let's make this red. Uh, so we can actually create a color up here. It's going to be color new, and we're going to make you 1.0, 0, 0.0, 1.0, 1.0, 1.0. There we go. We have a color. Um, gonna build you then hand it the context and there we go we have we have a mesh oh you're a mutable reference to a context I mean it kind of found context so hmm. 
Okay, so once we have that, then we can graphics draw this. So I have a Uh, graphics draw, hand it the context, hand it a reference to the mesh, um, and then we're gonna have draw params. Actually, I can do this one up here. Uh, in this case, I don't think we need anything special, so we're just going to default that and question mark you. So now we can go into the render hitbox system uh, in the main library. And way down here in draw, uh, let's at the very end, so it's on top of everything else, we're going to do a render hitboxes system, pass it a reference to self.world, um, pass the context, unwrap you. So if I do that, we should get hitboxes. So there's our asteroid. Here's our ship. Our ship is, is hitbox is a little bit nice. I love how like my bullet has a little red too. In case anything wants to hit the bullet, but that's just the way that I've done it. Um, it's really easy to kill the, uh, the UFO. Uh, so I'm thinking what I'm seeing about this is because it's a radius, I think I can divide by, by two. Um, how would I want to do that? Uh, for the collision, I would want to divide you by two in a hitboxes. So in render hitboxes, let's do size of borrow times 0 0.5. Um, yes, I'm running in debug mode. Yeah, I know. It, it is surprisingly, like, I've not had any hitching except when I do things that are stupid, like render infinite UFOs. Um, that, like, all of that works just fine. It's, it's pretty crazy. So if I do that, and now when I want to do, like, the... Now that we can see what this looks like before actually making the change to the code for like actually hitting. Yeah, see, that's not good. I, I like it for this, but not for everything else. So, because it is the radius. Like for the asteroids, it's perfect. For the ship, however, the ship is is bigger than the than this radius and then the ufo is like obscenely large now i could always just say like yeah it's, uh, it's 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 an acceptable problem it's a feature kind of like the red bullets they're really easy to see Did you see that? UFO just killed itself. Um, I think we need to activate the safe bullets. We need we need it to, to last longer. The UFO is too big. It needs to be like 30 frames. Half a second. For for it to like for, until the bullet becomes active. Okay, so if we do that, then then I think that the 
UFO won't kill itself. Oh, you know what else we need to do? When we kill... Okay, so... I'm gonna kill you, and then... Survive long enough for the UFO to, like, fire some shots. I think I really need to turn down my, um... My rotation sensitivity. Okay. Okay, yeah. Now, now... You're flying around, and you're able to shoot. Okay, that's good. And I should be able to be killed. Maybe. I wonder if half a second is too much. You have the red shield! I do, except it doesn't actually protect me. Everything has the red shield. Oh, okay. I thought I could get killed there. My other choice is I can use the layer system to um, to basically have the UFO on one layer and its bullets on a different layer, and then vice versa with the ship. So that way it will never get killed by its own bullets. Although I kind of like the idea that if you move too fast, you can get shot by your own bullets. I kind of like that. I also like the fact that you're you just now have to choose. Okay, when do you come back in? All right. Good good luck. Um I feel like there's a a bug with UFO shooting me, but I I can't can't quite... I haven't played around with it enough to really know what that is or if it exists. Okay, shoot me. I guess I, I wonder if I can color the bullet based upon if it's active or not. That could, that could help me. But I know I can definitely shoot, if I can shoot the UFO, it should be able to shoot me too. Because like that, that works out. Yeah, okay, so that kills the UFO. All right, so I, I think, I think we're fine. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back into the main library and we're going to be able to... Where, where is that? Render hitboxes. I'm just gonna um, put that in there. Like just uh, comment that out so we can turn it on if we ever need to in the future. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our, our requirements. So we're getting really close here. So, so far as a review, we have a rocket ship. Um, we display the current level, 
we shooting asteroids breaks them apart uh new level after after, after they all the asteroids are destroyed we have that score increases based upon asteroids shot and level um we display the score we display the number of lives left we can move the rocket around we can fire the gun um i have actually decided to go for more than just 10 bullets on the screen at the same time um everything wraps around the screen um the bullets do die after some time asteroids also travel wrap around the screen we display thrusters when moving forward the asteroids can be destroyed um the ufo is once per level so we have we have that too um the ufo fires towards the player kind of i decided that because I was thinking about that, I think it would be way too hard if the UFO just always fires towards the player. It would be like, the UFO would be too good. <laughs> exactly. Um, as it is, now we have these stretch goals, like a cooldown system, that could be good too. More asteroids plus speed at each level. That actually, we have that. We can't teleport around the screen. Um, the player loses a life, definitely. And sound effects will play. We don't have those. Oh, so you have a fire UFO that fires a full bullet, a few bullets, then cool down. Yeah, that could be interesting. I could also do a thing where it. Uh, I use something like a Monte Carlo random number generator that then determines if it's going to fire towards the player or randomly. So it's rare that it fires towards the player. That could be interesting too. Um, but okay, so something, something that I'm not doing, let's come back to here. When I create the UFO, um, we have our spawn. I kind of want to... So here's our UFO size. We have our location. Right now, okay, I want you to be random. I want this to be more random. Um, so what would let let's say I actually did let um Oh, I think I can actually have RNG passed in. So that's a mutable reference to a thread RNG. So what if each of these is a RNG gen range um, between 0, 0.0 and whatever the width of the entire screen is. Uh, which unfortunately, oh, I have context, so I can get that. So I can get uh, width, height is equal to, uh, this can be, drawable size, pass in context. I'm gonna be, no, I don't, uh, this is single threaded. So I don't, I don't have multiple threads. Um, okay, so then in location, it, you're going to be between, um, well, I guess this one is going to be, so you are going to be width. What? Why, 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 don't, why don't you know what you are? Because I need to let, that would be helpful. Uh, okay, so we have our width, and then you are to the height. So then you're going to be random where you come into the world. Uh, then you can use thread range, gen range directly. It stores the thread range output in TLS. Wait, wait, wait. It stores thread range. Wait, what does? I'm not passing RNG across threads.
What's TLS in this case? Thread local storage. Interesting. I don't know. I don't know enough about that. I haven't really done much with threads. Like the the little bit that I've done with threads are just sort of like getting it working, but not really understanding or grokking what's happening behind the scenes. Because like right now, um, this creates a error. So then we're gonna pass in um, a mutable reference to self dot rng, and then now that should spawn our ufo in a random location so calling thread range once creates the instance every other call is basically using the first instance okay interesting Oh, there it goes. Okay, so it's it's down there now. Ah. Interesting. So I can just constantly call thread range, like just do thread range. Oh, uh, you like the movement of the UFO? The UFO is using Perlin noise as movement. It's it's really fun. I like it. Um, okay, so if I do that, spawn UFO. Okay, so we're we're all good here. Then that spawns in a different location. I think I think we're fine still. Uh, oh, when we when we hit the ships, when we bolt in the ships, when we destroy the UFO. So we increment the UFO level killed on. So if UFO, then we're also going to want to increment score. Uh, it's probably also going to be a world that we do. Now, right now, uh, how am I? When I when I hit an asteroid, we're updating score, and our scores is based upon uh, just like whatever the level is. So it's like one times the level. So like, um, I probably want to do like level times 10 or something like that because UFOs are maybe a little bit more more trouble. So let's do increment score. Have our world. Salt. Um, we can grab the level out to figure out what that is. Or, you know what? I can also do something where it's independent of level. We just, we're just going to grab the, the current score. So that our score, uh, it's equal to world, get resource, names, score, string. Uh, we're going to borrow you mutably. You have to be mute. Uh, then our score is going to be a reference to a what? What are you?
Oh, it's it's not okay. It's a full it's a full thing we need to query for. Because our our create score here. You know, it our, our score is an entity, so we have a. We have a message of the score is that with component of just the score. Okay, and it's U32. So it's not a, oh, that's interesting. Okay, I forgot that I did that. Uh, so handle bullets hitting ships. So this isn't a, um, it's gonna be a query. So we're gonna query a vec. Names, um, what are you gonna be? You're gonna be score, and I think there's only one of these. I, I think that I don't need really need to worry about like another score. To string. Uh, so query, um, get. Names, score, string. So we should be able to assert that our scores uh, dot length is equal to one. Like we, we should never have more than one of these scores. Uh, so then what I should be able to do is let our score, it's going to be a data wrapper uh with i think we saw this is a u32 yeah uh u32 is equal to scores position zero uh we're gonna cast you um and then we're gonna update you so we're gonna say um score dot borrow mute plus equals uh, let's just do like 100. You get 100 points for hitting for hitting this. Okay, so increment score, we have to pass it in a reference to the world. Where's, where's my error? Oh, it's down here. Oh, and then we need to return. Okay. All right, so... When I kill a UFO, we should get should get something. Should be able to see that that score go up. You know what? I while I'm here, let's go ahead and update our um, our turning radius. Let's lower that down. So where where is that our rotation? So we have the create player. Level task, create score, I was left. Oh, because it's down here. Key down, handle respawn system. Uh, and then that's not really there. We're gonna have a system for like rotation. Systems, we have. Did we call it turn or rotate? Or, or none of the above? Update movement, maybe? No, 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 not that one. Did I just do this straight in in here? Where did I put this? Um, okay, so in key down event. Oh, that's just handle the response systems. So that's that's cool. That's that's not what we want. In our update. So here's our handle input system. That might be where it is.
Handle rotation. Okay. So in handle rotation... Rotate left key code. Okay. Wrapped rotation speed. Okay, is our rotation speed. So we do have a rotation... We do have a resource for rotation speed. Uh, that's definitely going to be in the main library here. So I just missed it. So we have an add wrist rotation speed right here, and it's 0 0.1. So if I do something like uh, 0 0.8, slow ourselves down a little bit, I should be a little bit more accurate at the risk of not being able to, to turn fast enough to hit things. But yeah, it's a little bit easier for me to hit these. Just a little bit easier. Maybe cut in half. But I want to see if we get a score now. So we have 15. Come on, stop flying around so fast. Stand, stand still, let me kill you. Wait, did I get? Oh, and 139. So there we go. We uh, we got 100 points for killing the uh, uh, the UFO. Now I believe we have another sis. We have a helper here for create uh, the debris. Do we have like one for insert debris? Insert bullet asteroids. No. Do we call it like ship debris? We create ship debris. And then, okay, this spawns an entity into here. Uh, and all we have to do is we have to hand it. Particles world, context, RNG, and a location of where to put it. Okay, so let's say we want that when the ship gets destroyed by a bullet we want this to happen and when the final asteroid is destroyed we want this to happen and when the ufo is destroyed we want this to happen like lo lots of times we want to call create ship debris so when, when are those uh let's see That's I go into our systems. When we hit the asteroids, uh, there's this one where update the score. Oh, because, okay, this, I wonder, I wonder if it would look okay if I just created the debris here. Like if I just did. I think we call it create ship debris. So that should probably be renamed. Um, then if we create ship debris, okay, then we pass it in a mutable reference to the particles world, uh, the context, RNG, and then the location. So we have the borrowed bullet location this can be a dereferenced to the borrowed bullet location. So we're actually the asteroid location. That's what I care about. We have the borrowed asteroid location. So if I do that. Now you're gonna yell at me. Oh, uh, let's not. There, we'll 
put you up there. Um, okay, so we need a particles world, we need a context, and we need an RNG. So, a particles world is a mutable reference to a world. Um, we need, so I'm using a completely different world for all the particles. Uh, context and RNG. So, context, mutable reference to context. You apparently use context and then RNG, which is a mutable reference to a red range. Ah, uh, okay. Use, um, Brand, is it just that I need? Yeah. Okay, so then I'm gonna head back to the main library. Down here is where that is. So we're gonna add in uh, the particles world set so immutable reference to self dot particles world. Uh, we're also going to pass it in context and um, a mutable reference to self dot RNG. So I'm curious of how this is going to look. It it might be terrible, but it might be great too. So every time I shoot. We get now particles. I kind of like it. I kind of, I kind of do like it. And it sort of masks a little bit of where it's going to. So I think, I think that's a good I think I'm going to stick with that instead of only doing it when it, uh, the final one gets destroyed. It does look, it does look, it makes it like look a lot more arcadey. It look, makes it look a lot cooler. Especially if I'm like chaining and getting a whole bunch of kills at the same time. Okay, so. Um, we did that when the asteroids get destroyed. So that was handle bolts hitting the asteroids. Um, so that's every asteroid gets destroyed. When the ship, we then want the handle bolts hitting the ships. Um, in this case, no matter which ship is hit. We can just remove this now. We don't need that anymore. No matter which ship is being hit, I don't need to check to see if it's a UFO. We're just going to do the. Oh, here's helpers. OK, so this is going to be the uh, create ship debris, create ship debris. Okay, so then we're going to do if uh, create ship debris and particle world context RNG and now the location of where we want to put this. Uh, we have the ship location wrapper. So this can be a dereferenced to the ship. Actually, I th can I just do. Oh, ship location. Um, so dereferenced ship location. That. And then what we need is particles world context and RNG. So use GGZ context. Use brand prelude red range. Okay, so we need a 
Particles. Particles world. Mutable reference to a world. Uh, we need context. Just a mutable reference to a context. And we need RNG, which is a mutable reference to a thread range. And then we're going to head. Um, Hmm. We're going to borrow you. Okay. We're going to head back to the main library. You're now yelling at us because we need to do the exact same thing here. So here, where was the other one? Um, I'll just pass you in. Um, okay. So you need a mutable reference to the self dot particles world. We need the context. We need a mutable reference to self.rng. And then now, if I destroy the UFO, we should see particles whenever the UFO is destroyed too. So let's go ahead and kill you really quickly. Oh man, that, that actually just makes it look so much cooler. There's a lot better feedback too. I destroyed it immediately and it uh, it died. Let's do it. Let's do go one more level. Last one. Oh, come on. There it is. And if I destroy you. We get we get particles. OK, so we now have particles showing up. You get destroyed. Um, so the only things that I'm missing is, uh, teleportation, which I don't know if I want to do in the end. So it's sort of like a question mark. Um, and the sound effects would be, would be nice. Like just a quiet game is not, not the best. That being said, um, I want to get rid of some of these warnings and then I want to start thinking about, um, AI because that that's. What, what I want to do is start moving towards the end goal of this, like the true end goal. Uh, no, I want to keep you here. How do I? Unused import. There's a way to allow this, right? Unused imports. Can I? Allow. Unused imports. I just want that one. Okay. Hitboxes, unknown word. Uh, yeah, go ahead and learn that. Um, okay, apparently we don't need these two. Need that. Uh, we have some. Let's see. Under hitboxing systems, this is now an allowed dead code. Um, bit mask. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and learn that. Go ahead and learn bit masks. Really? Okay. Go ahead and learn that too. All right. No warnings. 
no errors. Everything is looking good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and actually commit this because uh, we've done a lot of things and I don't want to like lose any of that. So what is this? This is going to be day 29. Um, and we basically have like our, our minimum requirements are feature complete. So we we have um, UFOs can like uh, players and UFOs can shoot each other. So I'll amend that as as we go. Now, what I eventually want to do, my my vision for this game to make it interactive with chat, I would love to have like an AI system where then you all can then say, I want to be part of this. And it will be like a an AI that your character sort of like joins in and goes and plays and we'll see how 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 far it can go. Now, when I say AI, I don't mean machine learning. I don't know that well enough in order to be able to do this here. Like, I think all of my machine learning sort of like playing around with has been in. Um, what what is it called? It's the the one where you pre um, you pre train it, uh, not the type where it can do like genetic algorithms and like figure out like learn as it goes. I don't know that type of machine learning, um, and I want I do want to learn it, and I would love to like implement those type of things with these type of games, and we'll get there eventually. But for now, I'm kind of thinking that um, we can have like a. One AI would be just spin it around, like stay still, spin around, and just shoot the closest thing towards you. Um, and then we'll sort of like add complexity to it as we go along. That being said, I do, I am curious what happens if I try to add multiple players at the same time? So right now we have the spawn player. Where where do I have that? It's a system I know. We have create player. Okay, so here's create player. Oh, and it's just okay, it just creates the player now it creates the player in the point we tell them to but it inserts them into the the actual world so if i were to come back to the main the main library let's say down here handle respawn system uh okay let's go into the respawn system Do we have any guards in here? Oh, get get the player ID. Okay, so handle response system. We get their lives remaining. We remove that. Mm, okay, so if the player ID is none. Now we've hit return and our lives remaining are, are greater than zero then so this is our guard here so basically if um if we don't have a player id now if i if i remove this section here if i if i take that out now every time i press return it should try to create a new player now it might crash because it also tries to remove the message but okay, we create a new player. I move over here. A new player. Now, when I'm moving, only that other player, like, I can't stop you. But when I fire, only that one fires too. Now, what is stopping me from doing that? If we do... Uh, 
up to acceleration. Okay, so is thrusting. Am I looping through and like quitting as soon as I find the player? Oh, I think I am. Because we're doing this thing where we're like, okay, uh, let the player index equals this. And then, then going about that. Okay, so I think what I want to do then is even if I have no, no player, Uh, it wasn't great player. It was. Insert player. Where where was I? What did I do? Um. Handle response system. Okay. Put that back so we can't create the player multiple times. But I kind of like the idea of us having a like an AI mode. And if I pressed like a button on a, my keyboard, like maybe I don't know what, what button would I want to do? I could do a mouse button too. Or I can have like AI mode on. Okay, so. Wrong one. Let's say that. Let's say that I just turn AI mode on and I, I put this into like a resource. So that means we're going to need the names. We're going to have AI, AI mode. And we can add just have this be like AI on. Um, we're gonna come back to our main library here. We're gonna add a resource for this AI mode. So AI on is string, and we're gonna make this be a Boolean. So you are, let's just say that you're true. Um, okay, you're happy, which means that uh, I do have, I have handled booleans in our resources. Now, now that AI mode is on, what's the first thing that I want to do with AI mode on? I want it to essentially just play the game on its own. Um, that could be it hits the return key when they're when it's time to to play the game so i don't know if i want like a system for for this because i don't i don't think it's going to be that simple I guess this is where like using a command pattern would be really, really helpful. Probably, probably should have done that. Um, if I create players though, with AI mode on, would this be a resource or would it actually be something we'd add to a player? Ooh. I I kind of wonder, what if I don't have this as a resource? What if I register it? And 
and we add it as part of the player. World dot register names AI on to string unwrap you. And then when we create our player, we're going to add a with component AI on, and we're going to say, true, you're, you're on. So if I, if I have, this is on, um, I might want like another resource for that too. So it doesn't even like display those messages that just like auto like plays the ship that that could be interesting. Um, but if I do this, then I like, I could have it where I could control it or it like controls itself too at the same time. Could be interesting. I think though, then we want to, for our steering, for like our, our controlling of the player. It's main. Okay, it's not the movement. I think it's our update acceleration. So here, oh, okay, look. So is thrusting gets set at this point? Um, Epic Blarg, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you for, for the help and the information. I hope that you uh, get some good rest and have a great week. So we can grab this resource of if it's thrusting. But let's say I want to rotate first. Where, where do we do the rotation again? Rotations, close that. Okay, player rotation, we borrow. Wait, is this, is this update? Oh, update acceleration. I think this is not what I want. Handle input, I think, is what I want. So like, here's where I have handle rotation, handle firing. What I need to... So this, um, hmm. I need to... Handle rotation would then be, okay, so I'm determining, get the key codes, if the keyboard is pressed. Okay, so I could replace this all handle input system just takes in the world, we get the player ID, oh, this is just all getting resource. So I would have to like do a query for each player. And if the player's AI mode is on, then it's going to do the rotation for it. What would that look like? So if I do let query world query. We 
we have names. Um, Aeon to string. To string. So if I do that, I get a query out so that AI ons um, equals get on to string unwrap you. Okay, so now I have a vector of the AI ons, and this also corresponds to the vector of all the players, essentially, because only the players have this. Then, if, if this is true, so if it's false, do this. But if it's true, do something else instead. So, um, for is, let's see, AI on in AI ons. It gives us our component data so we can cast it. It's going to be a Boolean. So now we can borrow that uh, to figure out exactly what it is to like to get it. And then here's this like entire handle rotation. And we put that in there because it's it's complicated enough. But here we can say if it's an AI, we can just have it rotate to the right forever. We can just try that out. Um and rotation See, here we do a query for that. We get the rotations. So here, let's query here for rotation as well. Okay, so if I have that, uh, then we want you to also have our index. Ons, iter, enumerate. Okay, so it gives us our index and the AI on, so we can get you, and then we can get that rotation. It's a data wrapper of a F32. index I cast you okay so we get that in here and so if um ai on borrow okay so if you're true then we're going to have our be referenced rotation borrow you mutably plus equals to like zero dot Zero, one, make you just a very slow rotation to the right or clockwise. So if I, if I just do that, our player, as soon as we create them in, should just slowly spin to the right like that. But what I would really like to have see happen is for us to be able to spawn another player, like another ship randomly in the world while we're playing, and maybe they can spin to the right. Now I can still move myself like that, and I can still control this, but it's also sort of like doing its own thing. How do I want to do that? Um, let's say 
if I press I don't want it to be enter key because right now I'm using that for like spawning when I'm dead. So I want like another key that I can press. Um, and it, it doesn't really matter what it is. Like I can press any, like I'm not using the keyboard for very much. I can do like maybe left control or right control. And that will create another player, but we'll have that player with an AI on. So for create players here, Let's have this take in AI. So AI mode is a Boolean. And we'll have you be AI. So when we create this player, we're going to have you be a false for, for us. But then In our main library, we could, let's see, do I want to do this in a handle respawn system? Because we get the key code here, or we get the world, we could do it. So let's say at the end of all of this, we can also have us just like if if key code. So if if um, keyboard okay, what do I need to do here? It's Oh, key code return. Okay, I could just do, okay, so if key code equals key code return. So if, if key code equals key code, key code, um, let's do, Control. I use delete. Delete to create a player. End. Escape. Insert. Oh, that would be weird. I don't want to do that. Kana. Kanji. Okay, left alt. Huh. Okay, so let's do left control. So if key code equals left control, then I want to create player. World, um, player ship. Okay, so we need to create a player ship too. Do that here. Um, size. It's gonna be our player size. So our size equals Okay, so you have us grabbing us out of here. So grab you out of here too. Now, I kind of feel like this should be separate in a different place, but for like our, our experiment here, I'm going to just keep it here. Um, okay, so you're going to be the player size. Uh, location, where do I want to put this? Let's just say for right now, like 500.0. Oh, you have to be a point. Let's do like 500.0, 500.0. So 
up and to the left of us. And then AI, we're going to say your troop. So whenever we hit left control, okay, so, oh, player ship color. Um, I'm going to make you white. Uh, should you be right, white? Or should we actually make you a different color? Let's do let AI, AI ship color. Color, new. Let's make you something else. We can do like red... Um, we can make you green. Okay, so a ship color. Oh, and then our thruster color, we can make that uh, red too. It doesn't matter. But thruster. Color. Okay, so that creates that way up here. Don't need you. All right, so what are what are you upset with? And not borrowed world as mutable because it's also borrowed as immutable. Um, oh, be, wait, you need to be mutable here, don't you? World. Immutable borrow at 57. Oh, okay, yeah. So we need to do some drops of like the wrapped player size. Okay. Is the world already mutable? I think I think it was. So I was doing like a double mutable, which is not not cool. But I think this works now. So every time I do a left control, it should create a player. So if I if I run that, we create our player, and then I hit left control. There's the other player, and our other our AI player is green and spins around. And I can fire like this. And I can shoot the other player. Oh no, this is gonna be so bad. And like potentially good. Because that means they can shoot me too. And it's like, are are they are we really on the same team? It will just be utter, utter chaos. Which I'm I'm okay with that. So I can create you again. So if I create a whole bunch of these are you going to get killed by asteroids couldn't tell if it was supposed to get killed by that Okay, it did not get killed by that asteroid. So we have to figure out what's going on there. Um, I think... When we handle the player getting hit by asteroids... Collide with asteroids. I think this is the big problem here. We're doing this like get the player ID out 
And I think I think like we need to rewrite a significant portion of how these systems work to handle AI type stuff. So I may need to rethink a bunch of these systems and like that's how that's how we're going to like update it. So I think I think I'm going to want it's it's 1140 right now and I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do right now is sort of undo what we just did with the AI system. Uh, so we'll just delete all these changes. Um, we're back to here. We can just do a cargo run and we can just play the game. We can just sort of see how far I can get as we're playing with what we have right here. And um, I'm going to be able to spend some time today and like this, this, you know, this upcoming week as we're playing around with this. How, how do I want to like actually handle this? Like, what do I want to do for AI? Um, do I want to play at the same time as the AI? That's like one question they need to answer. Uh, I kind of like the idea of like me playing at the same time as the AI, or at least having the option of playing at the same time as the AI. But then we need to make sure we don't kill each other. So I think what I'm going to be able to do is maybe write like a list of requirements up. And then that's there's going to be probably pretty significant updates. Uh, I hope it's not going to be a full rewrite, essentially, of like a lot of those systems. But I, I'm guessing that some of the systems do need to be rewritten to work better with um, multiple players. Which will in improve the code, so that's that's going to be good. Um, I have that debug of like, did we kill asteroids? I need to remove that. Once you start moving, I feel it gets harder. Because now I'm now I'm having to like look at my potential direction. I love how many like explosions are going on though. Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was going to turn in time. Yep, they're uh, they're getting faster. It's getting more and more crazy. How did I not die there? Okay. All right. Yeah. Now now we're getting to the point where it's. It's really hard. Level five. I don't think I've made it past this level before. Last life. My bullets aren't fast enough to like just do the uh, do a nice um, Get out with it, too. That's unfortunate. Oh, I thought I could turn in time for it, but I couldn't. Um, 1,200 points. I, I don't think that's too bad. There was a little tiny bit of hitching in there when all of the, the asteroids were getting destroyed at the same time uh, near the, the end levels when there's just so many of them. Um, I don't think that's going to be a problem with our uh, release mode. We have found that re release mode just makes things a lot, a lot faster. So we should be fine still at that point in time. 
I think it's mostly going to be figuring out how we want to deal with the uh the the like multiplayer and like if we want to deal with that here or if, if it's going to essentially be a rewrite of of a bunch of stuff now that so yeah i'm going to come up with a bunch of requirements for it and then tomorrow morning during that stream we can decide what we're going to do how we're going to deal with it so with that um i'm going to just go ahead and push these changes on up uh and i'm going to go ahead and end our um end the youtube video part of this here